This is me shopping my shelf, not spending any money this week on any books. You think I should have read the flaps before I filmed the video? Um, God, this is just, I cannot close. I'm not a closer. Not a closer. And <laughs> shocker, I totally didn't do that. I'm probably gonna move them both out the door when I do my next kind of unhauling. This is horrible. This is like legit, legit nonsense. Hey everyone, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be another round of my shopping my own bookshelf in my quest for my next great read. So a few videos ago, I had talked about how I'd been in like a real rut kind of across the board and just a little bit of a reading slump. And I think part of it was because I was in a life rut, so I was like not in the groove to read. And then there were a couple dead books along the way, but I'm really trying to resist temptation like the book outlet sale email I got today. Um, I did manage to avoid the book depository, like 10% off your order one that I got a few weeks ago, but it's like all my willpower to not run out and go buy a book or to like browse online. My wish lists are full, um, but the chaos behind me doesn't even begin to sort of show the pile of books that I have here that I haven't read. And here I go again, I've done it before. I'm trying to shop my own bookshelf and either like, you know, read the books and hopefully they'll be great and I'll love them. Or if they're not quite right for me, unhaul them and just get them out of here because we all know the books take up space. And I have committed to the fact that my solution is not to buy more bookshelves, but instead to deal with what I've got going on. So I picked a few books. Um, they range in topics and in how long I've had them. I don't know a lot about all of them. So let's just get into it and sort of fumble through it all together. The first book I pulled off my shelf is The Passenger by Lisa Lutz. And I picked this up in a old book outlet haul from whenever ago. And I years and years and years ago had read the book The Spellman Files that Lisa Lutz wrote. And I don't even know if it was like one of her first books. And honestly, I didn't totally like, like the book. And I feel like I just didn't connect with the book. It was also a while ago. So maybe I would think differently now. But she is an author that I am interested in that I continue to hear about. I have like watched interviews with her and really enjoy her as a writer, which makes me more intrigued by her books. So when I saw this book pop up and I kind of read the blurb on it, I thought, all right, let me just give it another go. And it's a thriller. It kind of has like this, um, it says on the front, the kind of suspenseful character driven mystery the term page turner was coined for. So this is a best of summer books, 2016 Boston Globe. So it's from a few years ago, but it's basically a thriller mystery, um, this woman and her name is in quotes, Tanya Dubois, because it's not apparently really who she is. So her husband's corpse still warm at the bottom of the stairs. She has to go on the run again. And it's kind of like if the police come to question her, they're going to find out that she doesn't exist. So she is someone who apparently keeps taking on different identities, um, but she's the heroine of the book. So I'm thinking something bad has happened to her that has forced her to sort of go into this sort of hiding identity. Um, so she kind of meets some people along the way, ultimately needs to come home and confront the darkest, um, the darkest secrets imaginable. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this book, but it got lots of great reviews. It's supposed to be a page turner. It's supposed to have an ingenious plot to it. Um, our heroine is supposed to be amazing. So I'm excited to give Lisa Lutz another try. It does on the back of the book make the like sort of dreaded comparisons to Gone Girl and Girl on the Train. But again, this came out um, 2016. Everything was kind of being compared to those books at the time. I happen to be someone who loves both of those books, but am slightly suspicious when books are compared to sort of be the next insert that title. So I'm going to read it. I'm interested in reading it. Um, I would be curious if anyone else has read it. So thriller, mystery, lady on the run. Um, that's the passenger. The second book I pulled off my shelf is Agatha Christie's The Monogram Murders. And this is a newer Poirot. And this is the first one that Sophie Hannah wrote. So 
If you don't know, Agatha Christie passed away in 1976, and what has happened with a few authors is their estate has granted someone the rights to be able to continue a story with one of the characters. And the same thing happened with um, Anthony Horowitz and Sherlock Holmes. So Kristen Hanna is the author here. I actually read um, Closed Casket, which was the second Poirot that she wrote. Um, it was on like one of those like insane Barnes and Noble discount tables in the store. So I picked it up not even really knowing that it wasn't the first book in the series, but I enjoyed it. It felt 100% like I was reading an Agatha Christie. So after I had finished that, I wound up picking this one up, which is the first in the series. <laughs> but anyway, um, Poirot is back and at it and being his Belgian self. So I'm excited to read this one. Like I said, I really enjoyed what Sophie Hanna has done. She's, I want to say, done at least a third in the series at this stage. Um, I'm kind of all over the place in the timing of these. And um, yeah, so she, Sophie Hanna is a, an author in her own right. She's written thrillers. And if you watched, um, I don't even know if I mentioned this in my A.J. Finn Woman in the Window versus Saving April video and sort of that whole A.J. Finn hoopla that's happening but he was actually Sophie Hanna's editor and she is one of the people who came out sort of when all these things came out about AJ Finn slash Dan Mallory being one and the same um that it was very well known that he spun tales and told stories and told lots of lies um the industry was very hip to that and she actually created a character based on him in Closed Casket, which, as I said, I've read, and now I know exactly who that character is. So there's a not-so-subtle wink-wink, nod-nod in that book. So it kind of endears me to her even more that she was, like, hip to the game and did something with it. So anyway, Agatha Christie, if you're a fan of hers, I think you would enjoy these books as the story continues for Poirot. Um, and if you're new to it, um, I think they're definitely worth picking up because you don't need to have read all the Agatha Christie's to just sort of pop into a Poro story. The next book is another um, book outlet haul rando type of a thing. And I'm not going to hold it up for too long because I didn't realize um, book outlet could give you old library books. And that's a thing. I literally felt like sketched out when I got this one in the mail. Um, but it's got that weird plastic cover. So I know it's going to reflect, but it's missing presumed by Susie Steiner. And this was a completely random buy. Um, and it is about a woman, Manon, and she is a police officer in Cambridge. And basically, you know, she's on the police radio. She hears a call about a girl who is missing and her name is Edith. Um, she's a grad student at Cambridge University and she is the daughter of the royal family's surgeon. So she responds to the crime scene and it's like there's blood spatter and the door is open, but it wasn't forced open and her keys are there and her phone is there, but she's nowhere to be found. So sort of instantly they know that this is going to be a huge case. This is a huge priority because of who this girl is. And they start, you know, on the investigation and Edith has all sorts of secrets. Apparently she has a boyfriend, but she was acting really erratically before she disappeared. And there's kind of all sorts of good stuff starts to come out. So it sounds kind of fast paced. I am someone who really enjoys a police procedural. This is, I don't know if it's like the first in a series, but there are a series of books. I should probably find out if this is the first to make sure I'm reading it first, but there are, um, this character, this detective shows up in multiple books, but I'm pretty sure this is the first one. So fully random by, um, and then the sidebar in the library book part of it, like on the inside, it's from Folsom public library. <laughs> I mean, all I think of is like Folsom Prison and Johnny Cash. Like, am I the only one? Like, I really feel like, am I reading a book presumed or innocent presumed, missing presumed, presumed innocent, good Lord, missing presumed. Um, but like, am I reading a crime book from a library, from a prison? I don't know. Supposedly it's from the public library, not the prison library, but it feels slightly sinister to me either way. The next book is yet another book outlet haul, random, sort of. And it's Anatomy of a Scandal by Sarah Vaughn. And the title jumped out at me because I know that this was made into a movie a while ago, but I never actually saw the movie. But I was totally intrigued by it. And this is 
um, turns into like a court case. So there's, it says a shocking confession, a high profile trial, a scandal unfolding. So this woman, Sophie, she's got, you know, the perfect house and the perfect kids and presumably the perfect husband. But then the husband becomes accused of some horrible crime. Don't know what it is. And like suddenly like the entire family is pushed into the limelight and scandal unfolds. And this is the anatomy of that scandal. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, ooh, I love this. Some people's secrets are darker than others. So it sounds like whatever he's accused of sort of is the catalyst of pushing everything forward. It puts the family in the limelight, obviously not in a good way. And there's some kind of trial happening. Is her husband innocent? Is he not? Don't know what he's accused of. And apparently there's some woman um, sort of out to destroy this woman's husband. So I don't know. It sounds good to me. It's like power, secrets, intrigue, um, kind of all that good stuff. So yeah. Random, not random. Haven't read it yet. Here it is. Um, Anatomy of a Scandal. Now to prove I don't just read thrillers, because I swear I don't, but I compulsively buy them, which is why I have so many of them. Um, but I also compulsively buy books on writing and creativity, and I don't read those either. But this is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, and you don't have to be a writer for this one. This is basically sort of locking any level of creativity, anyone who has any creative pursuits, whether it's like writing, photography, acting, YouTube video making, like whatever it is. But I had heard a lot of really great things about this book. I have not read anything else by Elizabeth Gilbert. I am not an eat, pray, love bandwagon kind of a girl. Um, I know what it's about, but I haven't read it. I honestly have no interest in it. But this book in particular sounded very interesting to me. Um, so it's sort of like pushing beyond the fear, living a creative life. Like I said, it gets good reviews from lots of people. And I'm just, I'm curious to read it. So it's 270-ish pages. Um, it's supposed to be very, I hate to say the word like empowering, but I think maybe like a good kick that you need. Um, I talked about just sort of my like across the board struggling. I've been struggling with writing, with being interested, with staying focused um, on writing, with really like digging in. And I had actually tried, um, I obviously was trying to like cheat. I picked like a really short writing inspiration book on my shelf and I wound up like downloading the free audiobook of it and I didn't like it and it didn't work for me. So I feel like I need to like pull up my big girl pants and read like a real book and not try and find a shortcut um, solution to things. So I pulled this off the shelf. Um, I think it might be time to figure out what the big magic is all about. Plus I really love the cover. I think it's pretty. And the last book, I will be honest, I don't know when I got this, where I got this, what drew me to this in the first place. Like, I, I don't even know. It's The Party by Elizabeth Day. And this is kind of like domestic thrillery mystery, it seems. I just, I don't even know how this came into my life because I feel like I haven't heard about it since. So I don't even know. But we all black out by books, even when we're not drinking right like clearly other people please must tell you that you go into like a bookstore and you just sort of like buy a whole bunch of stuff like blinded by the light and don't remember why um but this is a book about two men um one of them is throwing himself a 40th birthday party so i'm guessing they're both 40 or one's 39 and 40 um ben and martin and they were childhood friends and sort of over the course of their life ben has become this like wildly successful rich dude and Martin has been struggling. He's an art critic, but he's always been kind of on the poorer side of things. But throughout their entire lives, they've stayed very close friends, despite the fact that they don't have matching incomes. And I think that confuses some people as to why they're friends. But Ben throws himself like this fab 40th birthday party out in the countryside and like all of like London's finest are there and the men are there and their wives are there. And here we go, like it says, over the course of a single evening, two married couples will come to question everything they thought they knew about each other, culminating in an explosive act of violence. So a few weeks after this party happens, Martin, who is the poorer friend, is in a police station being interviewed about the events of that night. And 
they, uh, his wife is being questioned about her husband and about his past and like secrets start to come out and some intrigue. I'm guessing there's some lies and some secrets and it all sort of collides in a way nobody could have anticipated. So bad things go down at the party, it seems. But people have lots of nice things to say about it. And I'm guessing, I, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea why I bought this book. Not that it sounds bad or anything, but like, I don't know anything about Elizabeth Day or anything like that, but it has just been collecting some dust um, on my bookshelf. So I thought it was time to give it a go. And I got another book called The Party by Robin Harding. And I also haven't read that one, but that's like, um, uh, two parents, I think it's like their daughter, they throw her like a sweet 16 party maybe or a birthday party at their house and I think one of her friends like dies at the party and it becomes obviously um, a big deal in the hood and with the parents and with everybody else around. So um, sort of both in the vein of like one party, one night changing everything and not that I'm doing it for the pop sugar reading challenge, but one of the challenges is to read two books with the exact same name. So maybe this is the year I read both party books or at least give them a try. And if they're not right for me, move the party out the door. So that does it for this round of shelf shopping. Um, I would love to know if you guys have read any of these books and if there's like any you would recommend that I like push to the front of the list that are absolutely worth reading and like need to be read now. Or if there's any that you're kind of like, meh, they're sort of duds and either like don't waste your time or like don't rush to get to that one. So don't be shy. Tell me what you think. I don't care if it's not a good review. That's totally okay with me. But I do like the idea of trying to like push some of these books to the front. Last time I did this, I read two of the books. I don't even know if I read a third. I definitely read two of them. Um, and they, they were both kind of fine. And I will probably just unhaul them next time I go through my shelf and unhaul some books. And I would rather, like I say, I would rather make room on the shelf for something new than be holding on to something that I don't even know what it's about. Never mind, something I wound up reading and not totally loving. So that's where I'm at. Let me know what you guys are reading as we speak slash watch this video. Um, I'm always looking for something new. <laughs> it's just like terrible. I just said I'm like trying not to shop, but I can shop my library because that's free. Um, but anyway, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing for now. These are the books I'm going to try and give a go to. I'm really hoping to find something that's going to creatively spark me. So maybe I'll start flipping through big magic, but that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next one. This is a horribly garbled exit to a video. So if you're a first timer here, please don't judge me by this mess that's happening right now. But I'm a little bit loopy. Um, it's towards the end of the day and I'm trying to rush through before I lose all of the light from outside. So more than you ever needed to know, more than you ever cared about. But thank you guys for sitting here today with me, watching with me, hanging out with me, all that good stuff. and. I will see you next time when I hopefully am a little less crazy cakes than I am today. So have a good rest of the day, everybody, and I will see you soon. Bye.